Electricast. The best way to access that partner is not going out, but going within through my current sense that I'm activating, let's say touch, feeling, and being with that partner already. Being with the, again, the example, the feeling of that partner already. Being with the feeling of that person already. Being with the touch and the sensing of the skin of that partner already. Because at the deepest state of consciousness, you are already with that partner. Welcome, beautiful souls, to season two of the Cosmic Love Antenna with your host, Harrison Ma. I invite you on a mystical voyage from the intellect to the soul, delving deep into the mysteries of love's spiritual essence and its unfolding. This podcast celebrates the peeling back of heart layers, revealing profound lessons, interviews with spiritual seekers, and practices to open your heart to love's infinite wisdom. Good morning. Evening, afternoon, magical beings. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome back to another solo sode here on the Cosmic Love Antenna. This is another deep dive into a heartfelt spiritual topic to help you pull back the layers, restricting your beautiful spiritual presence, your loving presence from being manifested out there into the 3D world. And today's topic is specifically on manifesting, Manifesting Love, New Romance, Friends, and Tribe, a series I am going to be doing here on the show, a series designed to, and this is for you, if it is on your heart on of wanting to manifest new love, whether it's romantic, whether it's friendship dynamics, shifting friendship dynamics, or expanding that friendship dynamic into a tribe and a community. And so I'm going to be dropping some practical tools, tips, and insights to help you do so. To do that, I'm actually going to be sharing these tools and these understandings through the chakra framework. So this is going to be, I'm going to aim, I'm going to do my very best, I can't make any promises. I'm going to aim to make these a little bit shorter, but even more precise and through each of the chakra centers to to really help you hone in to the specific area that we're talking about and to help you leave with some tools and some shifts in consciousness that are really going to be actionable. So that is the show today. Make sure you stick around to the end to soak it all up. As always, if you get value out of it, please share it out with a lover and a friend. Leave your feedback over on Apple and Spotify to help me know if this is exactly what you want. Remember, through reviews and comments, that helps me pick topics much like this one because many of you have asked for this theme today. So I'm answering it. And ways you can do that in the future is in future reviews. I also want to welcome all the people joining live on YouTube and Facebook. I see there, Lily. I see there, Sharon. Thank you for joining. So with all that, let's get into it today. Let's get into manifesting love, new romance, friends, and tribe. We're going to be talking about it through the root chakra today. The first thing I want to hit on, and these are going to be common themes throughout all of the parts of these series. The first thing I want to hit on here when we want to manifest new beautiful love in our world is we want to understand three very important teachings, spiritual teachings. The first is that you want to be that which you want to see. You want to become that which you want to manifest. If you've listened to my shows before, heard me speak about manifesting, or you're in the spiritual world, This is not a new thing to you. We must not search. We must become. Like attracts like. We live in a universe of resonance. The law of correspondence is a real thing. So the first understanding here is that this is not a going out and getting. 
This is a going in and becoming. This is not a going out and getting. This is a going in and becoming, which leads to the second principle here. You are not a soul in a body. You are a body in a soul. I'll say that again. You're not a soul in a body. You are a body, a physical body that is inhabiting a soul. This is important to understand because most of the things that are stopping you from manifesting your romance, friends, tribe, community, partners, etc., are not just in the physical being that you are, but they also exist in the larger soul that your consciousness inhabits. And I will go more in depth into these teachings within this series, but I just first want you to conceptualize the bigger dimensional being that you are, which leads me to the third point here, the third sort of foundational understanding of manifesting love before I get into more specific root teachings. Nothing is outside of you. Nothing is outside of you. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is from an individual expression, from the small, let's just use the terms here, small self and big self, from the small individual, I'll use me as an example, as the individual that is Harrison, the ego identity that is Harrison, Yes, there is separation. I can see in this 3D form, there is separation between me and this screen, separation between me and Sharon, Lily, whoever's watching this. But as I expand and go deeper into myself, wanting to manifest more love, go deeper into the consciousness that I am, the big self that I am, I start to understand that there is nothing when I connect to my deeper consciousness my deeper awareness, another way to say it, the deeper I am presence that I am, there is nothing outside of that. Everything is that. Everything is consciousness. Everything is love. Everything is the field. So why is this relevant? If you're looking to manifest a romantic partner, a friend, a tribe. It must be understood that you are not separate from that which you want to have. The sooner that we can hold that in our heart and feel that truth, the sooner that that partner, friend, tribe becomes manifest in the 3D. Okay, so I'm going to pause it there. These three fundamental teachings, again, I'm going to hit on throughout this entire series, but I just want to put them as the foundation of everything we'll be talking about. Be what you want to see. You're not a soul in a body, but a body in a soul, and nothing is outside of you. Okay. So let's go let's get specific now. Let's look at manifesting love through the root chakra. Okay, I'm going to make our way up throughout this series and each of these centers we can use as I'll call it an antenna, a cosmic love antenna to help us attract, help us become the field of bringing in and manifesting more of what we want. So when we look at each of the chakra centers, we must start to open to the themes that they represent to use them. So if we're looking to manifest new romance, friends, tribe, new love, what are the themes of the root center that we can use to do that? The first of which is, well, there's three. I'm going to talk about three here and one. Safety, security, and support. Safety, security, and support. Remembering our foundational principle at the start, 
if we want to manifest a partner, a friend, a tribe that gives us that, provides that for us, safety, security, and support, we must be that which we want to see. So the question is, if I'm not feeling safe in my body, if I'm not feeling supported, if I'm not feeling secure, what are some ways to activate that sensation, that feeling, that essence moving through us? The first of which here, and a lovely Sharon, I uh, tuning into you my friend this connects to a question that you asked in the tribe uh yesterday day before the first of which is connecting to your guides connecting to your spiritual support team that is around you 24 7 i will put a episode in the show notes of this episode where i've talked about using guides angels uh, ascended masters, all of these spiritual entities for healing. I'll put that in the show notes, but I'll speak about it here now specifically. One of the roles of our spiritual support team that is around us, and it's in the sentence there, spiritual support team, one of their main roles, angels, guides, ancestors, ascended masters, many different kinds, one of their main roles is to remind us of how supported, how safe, how loved we actually are. One of their main roles is to help us remember our innate state of safety, security, and support through the love that they channel through us. I've shared in my journey one of my first experiences with an angel, as, as an example here, one of my first experiences with an angel was a heart explosion, <laughs> a heart awakening, a heart, that's the only way I could describe it, explosion of connection to an angel in my heart space. And that's not, I'm not alone in that experience. The spiritual support team that is around us in all, all its different forms is there to give us this reconnection. But it's very important to understand that we must, we must ask for it. We must open to it. So if we're looking to manifest love in our lives, again, in the form of romance, friendships, a tribe, then one of the things that we can do is connect to our guides, give them permission, open up to them, and ask them to remind us of our innate safety, our innate support, our innate security. One of the other things I'll say here is it can be very easy once we start doing this in the different forms of guides that we interact with to want to get specific around who they are, what they are, where are they from, all these things. It's natural. But what I would say here is that this is the mind. This is the mind moving through a feeling that it has of needing to know. The mind needs to know, otherwise it can't happen. The mind needs to know all the little intricacies of the current experience that you are having in this example guides. otherwise. We can't take the step. And it's here we can surrender that, needing to know. Answers come, especially in relation to guides, but they come once we remove the feeling of needing to know. We're loved regardless. We're given this support, this security, this safety regardless. And we don't need to know all the intricacies to receive it. I'll I'll pause there. I could I might do a future show on all things guides, another one, but I just want to insert this here in regards to manifesting love, because again, this is a way that we activate this innate sense 
of safety, security, and support that we then attract in new partners, new friends, new tribe. Next up here, another way that we can connect into our innate state of safety, security, and support in order to manifest new love is by connecting to the earth heart. This is one of my favorite practices, and it's because it's so powerful. I'm going to use a very specific example. Let's say that you are wanting to manifest a tribe, a community that provides you with a sense of being held, provides you with a sense of being seen, provides you with a sense of knowing that you're not alone. I know I've had those desires. So applying our foundational principle of be that which you want to see and realizing that there is nothing outside of you, what we can now do is apply a connection to the earth, apply a connection to the earth heart. It's very easy for us to understand that we are in a soul family or a soul contract with physical humans, but we are always also connected in a soul contract, soul family with the earth. And much like our guides, our angels, our ancestors, she is also always there waiting for us to ask, for us to open to her, for us to, in this example, ask her for the reminder of how held we are, ask her for the reminder of how supported we are, ask her for the reminder for the sensation and the feeling of being supported. This could be look like actually getting out onto the earth. I did this a couple of days ago. I went out into the sun and literally laid belly to belly to the earth and did a little meditation around something similar to this. But connecting into her heart and stimulating, reactivating these feelings, these sensations, because that is what, that is how you attract. That is how you then bring in the new tribe. You then bring in the new people that you want. Okay, and I'm going to insert something here right now. And I see, Annie, you dropped into the chat, my friend. Thank you for coming in. You're saying amazing. I want that exact thing for myself right now in my life. So I want to add something here for you, Annie. I know you posted a question the other day around how do we release and let go of current connections that we have in our life, current manifestations of tribe and friends that we know in our heart no longer are aligned with us. It's not a bad thing. It's just a recognition and awareness that you've shifted and changed. So now you want your external tribe and family and friends to Reflect that change. So much like I spoke about at the start, there's two ways to do this. There's the long way in which you go out into the world and change that friendship group, i.e. set up boundaries, i.e. You know, tell them you're no longer friends, i.e. You know, all these things, and those things work, right? And I'm not taking anything away from them. But what I'm, in, what I'm asserting here is that there's a faster way to do this. And the faster way to do this is to become that which you want to see, is to lean into the law of resonance, the law of correspondence, and embrace more of what you have become, embrace more of what you are now raising your vibration to, your frequency to, and that which is naturally not in correspondence, that which is naturally not in resonance, will fall away naturally, will change naturally with no force, with no pressure, with no resistance. So this is 
as we move forward throughout this series, this is going to be another big theme, that of ease, that of blissful, graceful steps forward, manifesting new romance, friends, tribe should not be difficult, should not hold resistance. And if there is resistance, if there is difficulty, if there's fear, if there's lower density emotions, then we move through those lower densities with ease, with openness, with love. And that in turn attracts more of what we want in this moment. All right, let's, uh, let's pause there for a moment, reset. I want to welcome all the people that are dropping in live. Thank you, Gemma. I see that my friend, Anne and Sharon, happy it's resonating. Sharon, just reading your comments. I was deemed as anxiety. Now to change the mind's perspective to that is love. Yeah, it's important to, once we start to see aspects of self, that hold lower density, anxiety, depression, anger, guilt, shame. If we want to manifest partners, friends, tribe that do not reflect this back to us, applying the same rule here, becoming that which we want to see, we must be an example of what it looks like to move through these lower densities. And how do we do that? Let's use guilt, anxiety, shame as an example. We allow, we bring awareness to those parts of us that hold those lower densities, right? We allow, bring awareness, we feel it, we see it. And then what? How do we raise our frequency from that lower density state? We love it. We celebrate it. We appreciate it. So it raises, so it moves, so it shifts. So it now becomes a higher vibration in which we now attract from. Again, so this is another example of if we're seeing partners, friends, family, tribe in our life that is reflecting, triggering guilt, shame, anger, these lower densities to us, we could change them or more importantly, we could change ourselves. We could love those aspects so they alchemize, so they move, so they shift into something more of what we want. And you're saying such ease in my body hearing this. Yes. Speaking of which, perfect little segue here into the next point here within the root chakra for manifesting love new romance, friends, and tribe is using one of the main themes of the root center is your physical body. And what we must understand is that while we are not our physical body, right? we are so much more, right? The, the foundational rule that I shared at the start was that we are not a soul in a body, we are a body in a soul, right? While, while we must understand that we are so much more than the physical body, we must also understand that it is through our physical body that we can learn to bring awareness to what we are manifesting. I'll say that again. It is through our physical body we can learn to bring awareness to what we are manifesting. Does this feel easeful? Does this feel tight? Does this feel full of resistance? Does this feel fearful, dense, heavy? These are just some examples. But we must appreciate and celebrate, not become, but appreciate and celebrate and bring awareness to what our physical form, our physical identity, the sensations what, they, what our physical body is helping us to understand when it comes to manifesting. And I'm going to speak more about this when I talk about 
the third eye chakra and manifesting. But I just want to plant this seed here in this moment of using your physical body. Right? This is why we're focusing on the chakras as we raise up here. It's because each chakra center has its own field. And if we can tune into the field and the themes, then we can get specific around what we are and are not manifesting. And one of the biggest, one of the biggest indicators that our body reminds us of in regards to what we are manifesting is ease is grace, is bliss, is love. So I can use me as an example here in this moment, right? My intention for this show and the idea around this episode that I'm currently recording for you in this moment is something that I manifest, that I'm manifesting right now. And an indicator for me that it is in alignment with what I want is as I speak to you in this moment, there is no tightness. There is no tension. There's no resistance. Everything is flowing. I'm not thinking. I'm just allowing and having love and and grace and information and frequency move through me. This is not a Harrison thing. This is something that we can learn to do within the context of this chat today in manifesting romance, friends, and tribe, we can look for when we are around or with someone that provides that ease, that provides that bliss, that provides that channel of grace. I hope this is resonating. One more, one more little insight here and practice around the root and manifesting love and romance, friends and tribe. And this goes deeper into the physical body. So we've just understood that the physical body sensations tell us, give us indicators of where we're at, what is happening in our current moment of manifesting. But let's, let's go a step deeper. Let's ask the question, why, why is the physical body and the body, let's call it, let's use the term body sense, why is the body sense a gateway to this ability to manifest. When we use the word sensuality, or let's use the term spiritual sensuality, it is through our senses that we open to the present moment. It is through my vision, through my hearing, through my feeling, touch, through my taste, through my smell. I tune into the current moment, the current present experience. Why is this relevant? It is only in this current present moment experience that we access to, that we get access to the greater consciousness of what we are. And remember what I started this conversation with. One of the fundamental laws is that there is nothing outside of you. There is nothing outside of the greater consciousness of what you are. So putting all these dots together, when we use our body sense through our different senses, we access the present moment. And in the present moment, we open the gateway to our greater consciousness, the greater consciousness field in which everything already exists within. So if I want to manifest 
a romantic partner with a certain array of attributes, the best way to access that partner is not going out, but going within through my current sense that I'm activating, let's say touch, feeling, and being with that partner already. Being with the, again, the example, the feeling of that partner already. Being with the feeling of that person already. Being with the touch and the sensing of the skin of that partner already. Because at the deepest state of consciousness, you are already with that partner. So just tying this up here, the body is a gateway to this. Specifically, your body sense is a gateway to this manifestation. And the more we tune into this, the more that we act in this way, the more that we open ourselves in this way, the quicker it manifests. All right. I will land it there with that one. Beautiful tribe. I did it. I think I did it in a short amount of time. I am going to wrap it here today. I hope this resonated. Again, this is part one of seven. So I'm going to do a series of the along the chakras. I'm going to keep this chat going next episode into the sacral chakra, where we're going to be talking about manifesting new love, romance, friends, tribe through the sacral context, uh, and a little bit of a teaser here, talking about emotions, talking about the relationship with emotion and how does that factor in to this manifesting, talking about the inner child, sexuality, and knowing me probably a bit more. So please catch that episode. If you're listening on the podcast, you'll see it in the player when it comes out. If this brought you value today, please share this with a friend a family member, a lover that you feel it can support. And I want to thank all the beautiful souls that joined me live. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Sharon, for joining. And he says, I love every word as usual. And I love you, my friend. All right, beautiful beings. I send you love. I send you light. Until next time, I'll see you again very soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Love Antenna with me, your host, Harrison. If you gained value or this episode hit your heart, please remember to share this out with a friend, a family member, or a lover. You can also leave your love over on Apple Reviews and Spotify star feedback, and this helps me spread my frequency to more souls in need. Finally, if you want to connect with me deeper, want to reach out, interested in coaching, please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn at Harrison Ma, Ma spelled M-E-A-G-H-E-R. Sending you so much love. Hey there, fabulous souls. I'm Stephanie Baklaan. And I'm Eden Alpert. And we're the hosts of the brand new podcast, Unapologetically Fab. Get ready to join us on an amazing and real journey as we dive into life after 40 and own it. We're all about changing the narrative, leaning into who you are, and living a life by your own design. Join us as we embrace life unapologetically and redefine success. This is Unapologetically Fab. An Electric Cast production. See you there.